Let's take a look at the bent molecular geometry. So starting off, there are two ways we can get there. We could have this shape here, that's bent. We have a bond angle of 120 degrees. Over here, this is also considered bent. We have a bond angle here of 109.5. It's kind of a generic bond angle. So let's talk about each one of these, how we end up with these, look at some examples, and maybe look at things in three dimensions to make sure we understand. Let's start with this one here. So a good example here would be SO2. We have the central sulfur here, then we have that lone pair, that's here, and then we have these two oxygen atoms out here. And with molecular geometry, we don't worry about whether this is a double or a single bond, really. So let's look at this in three dimensions. So remember, we had that central atom, that's the purple, say that's the sulfur, add the two oxygens, one, two, and they spread out. They're as far away from each other as they can be. And then we're gonna add that lone pair. When we do that, it pushes those down, and we end up with that generic bond angle of 120 degrees. So this is considered a bent molecular geometry. And it's bent because the lone pair occupies space, and it's pushing these atoms down, these oxygen atoms down. Let's go back. So when we have three things, a steric number of three, attached to our central atom, and one of them's a lone pair, that's going to be a bent molecular geometry. We can also have a steric number of four. We have four things attached to the central atom here, one, two, three, four, and two of them being lone pairs, one, two lone pairs, and then two atoms attached. That's gonna be bent as well, but this bond angle here, it'll be less because now we have two lone pairs pushing down. A really good example of this, water. So our Lewis structure doesn't really show us the bent shape very well, but we can see right here we have a hydrogen atom hydrogen atom, those are our two atoms, and then we have two lone pairs. Let's look at this in three dimensions as well. So we'll consider this our oxygen. Let's add two hydrogens, and they spread out, and we'll add a lone pair. Remember, we have two, so let's add one lone pair, and we get that same thing as SO2, that same molecular geometry, but that second lone pair pushes it down further, so our bond angle ends up being smaller. In this case, this is a generic bond angle. Water turns out to be 104.5, but we still consider it bent. So this number will vary depending what you have attached to that central atom, but right around 109.5. Let's go back. So when we have four things attached to that central atom and two of them are lone pairs, that's gonna be bent as well. Finally, if you're using the AXE notation, here we'd have A, that's the central atom. We'd have two atoms attached in E, the number of lone pairs. So we'd have AX2E, and you could look that up. That would be a bent molecular geometry. Down here, we'd have A, again, two atoms, and then two lone pairs. So this would be AX2E2. If you look that up, that's also bent. What's different will be the bond angles. This is Dr. B looking at a bent molecular shape or a geometry. Thanks for watching.